Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In this video, we continue talking about files, and in particular, we're going to talk about how we can write files. And to write files, once again, we're going to go back to the Java libraries, and we're going to use java.io.printwriter. Oh, why are these things in the Java libraries, you might wonder? Uh, this is a book on the, where we're using Scala. Well, because Scala has access to the Java libraries, in general, the developers of Scala have taken the approach that if there's a perfectly good solution to something in the Java libraries, there's no point in duplicating it. In the case of, of writing out the files, there really isn't uh, a significant improvement that you can make for the text files, so they're perfectly happy writing, the, staying at this, uh, at this level and having you use the Java libraries. So, what I want to do is I want to run through a little example and I want to write out data using a, a print writer and then look at it uh, using a simple plotting program. So the uh, file that I want to do, let's call this logistic.scala. Okay. I want us to plot the logistic map. Um, now since we're worried about writing to files, let's go ahead and let's import our java.io.printwriter and talk about how we can create these. So I'm going to call my print writer PW and I'm going to you can pass it a new file object like we did with the scanner or you can just pass it a file name. So how about I call it this? So I'm going to have one file called the log sequence.txt and as we have said many times before once you open a file you need to close it. And so here we open a file to to be able to write out to it and then we close that file and in between these two obviously we should write the things that we want to to write out there. How do you write to uh, a print writer? Well it turns out it's really easy. It's exactly what you're used to. There's a whole bunch of commands called print and println that will print whatever you want. So just to show that this works, now if I uh, less the logistic sequence, there's our string of hi mom. Okay, so it's very easy to write out to to files. Uh, really doesn't require anything all that special. You just put all of your print lines and prefix them with pw dot or whatever you call your print writer dot and it will go out to the file. Okay. Now in this case what I want to do is I want to print uh, values of something called the logistic map. And so the logistic map is a function of, so it's it's the a function of x and it also takes a parameter r. So I'm going to pass in an x and an r and given a value of x the value of the logistic map is r times the current value of x times 1 minus the current value of x. And you can have different values of, of r for this and it produces different sequences of numbers. So this is, this is really a sequence where you start off with a particular value, maybe you start off at, uh, at uh, well, something not zero, um, maybe you start off at 0. 0.5. So if I start off at 0. 0.5, I have 0. 0.5 times 1 minus 0. 0.5, when you square the 0. 0.5 you get 0. 0.25 and you multiply it by r. And then what you do is you feed this back through. You call the function over and over and over again and look at the behavior of it. And there's some very interesting things that happen with the logistic map, even though it is a remarkably simple little function here. And so I want to kind of explore that a little bit. And how about we do a print line uh, So we'll ask the user what value they want to use in here. Next double. Not next, so we'll read double. I'm think, thinking of the uh, scanner that we played with in the last video. So I read in a double, and I will know, use that as my value of r. And then uh, I want to have a var for my x 
and I'll set it equal to, I don't know, 0 0.1. Um, obviously, I don't want to set it to 0 or to 1. Well, if I set it to 0, 0 times anything is 0, so the whole thing comes back as 0. If I set it to 1, this is 0, and then it goes to 0, and it stays there forever. Interesting happens. Interesting thing ha things happen in the values in between. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to just write for the first uh, piece maybe a little while loop and or maybe a for loop. Let's I prefer for loops in general. So for how many iterations should we do through this? I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to think, hundred, a thousand. I'll, hmm, I think a thousand will be too many. The stuff will get lost. And what I want to do inside of here is I want to set x equal the logistic map of x and r. And that repeats over and over. And all I want to do now is for my log sequence, uh, and actually let's change the name of our um, change the name of our print writer here to sequence, because it turns out I, I want to write two files with this. SEQ dot print line of X. And then we'll close it out and basically we'll be done. So if I oops insert one two. I just want that to happen a hundred times. I don't really care about the actual values. One, I happen to know some values where interesting things happen. Uh, it's not all that interesting for smaller values of R. Once R gets up to around 3.5, 3.6 though, you can have some, some interesting things happening. And we can look at this using less. And you can see these numbers jump around quite a bit. Uh, to look at that, we can use a program called GNU plot. You can use really whatever plotting program you want. GNU plot just happens to be a fairly easy one here. And so, notice that was tab completion. So I say plot, and then I put inside of single quotes the log sequence.txt, and I get uh, this. And so you can see that the, the numbers are jumping around quite a bit here. If we were to run this and use a smaller value, uh, for example, 2.5. Yeah. 2.5 is somewhat less interesting. It moves up to here and then it sits right there. And this is and this is what's called a fixed point. There's a value obviously around 0.6 that when you feed it back in, it gives you back that, that same value. And with a value of 3.6, there isn't a fixed, uh, a nice fixed value that it alternates. And so it actually, at that value, it's, it's uh, what's called chaotic. Um, and, okay. Now, this is not kind of the interesting way to visualize this. It's, it's seeing it as a time sequence can be, um, can be nice. But uh, another way of visualizing this is to uh, oh wait there we go okay um, okay so this is our time sequence instead of visualizing it as a time sequence it's nice to visualize it where you plot the old x value versus the new x value. And so for that, I want to create a second file. And this is this type of plot is often called a cobweb plot. And you can go and you can look up uh, cobweb plots. And so what I want to do for my cobweb plot is I want to print out the Last last value of zero of x separated from the current value of x. Now I don't right now have a last value of x or last equals 0, 0.0, but what I can do in here is I can say last equals x, and now I have both the last and I calculate the new x, and then I can write that out. And so we can come over here 
and we can run this again. And let's say I go to, let's do a 3.3. .3. And instead of doing the log sequence, let's do the cobweb. Oh, haha, -ha. I forgot to do something over there. I'm wondering if anyone watching this can see what I forgot to do. I didn't close the file. Now I should three point three. Actually let's go make sure that we have a cobweb here, yep. And we can look in it. Okay, lots of data. So I can use GNU plot and I can plot the cobweb with lines and I get something that looks like this. Um, technically the cobweb plot typically draws a line from the uh, from your x value and then it goes to the to the middle line and then it goes up we'll uh, I'm not going to go through and make it so that this draws a full cobweb uh, plot that can remain as an exercise for the student um, but it, it it happens to be a little bit more um, a lot prettier a little bit more informative as well what happens if we change this and we run it the value of 3.6 then you can see that the the point is really jumping all over the place in here uh, and you you truly get chaotic behavior. So this video gives you a brief introduction to how you can use print writers for writing out to files. They really are very simple. Um, do remember to close them. It's, it's not hard once you've created your print writer to, to print out anything that you might want. And of course in a lot of programs what you want to do is you want to have it so you run the program once and it writes something out to file and the next time it reads it back in. And one of the things to keep in mind when you do this is you have control over the file format. And as you've seen, reading in data can be a little bit challenging. There are certain things for which it's easy, the format makes it easy to use a Scala IO source. There are other things where it's easier to use a Java IO scanner. If you are creating your own data format, so if you're reading someone else's data format, well, you just have to read whatever they give you. But if you're writing your own, if you have complete control over this, feel free to make it so that the stuff that you write out is in a format that is easy for you to read. And there are a number of projects in, in the book where you get to decide your data format. And so really you should take some time to think about it and make sure that what you write out is something that's easy for you to read. And that's it for this video. And we'll come back next time and finish off our the chapter on text files.